what's up? My man Thomas, how you been? I've been good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. Just really trying to take everything one day at a time. You know things are pretty crazy up here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the protests, the fires, just all out of control. I can smell and see the smoke. It's been surreal. What's happening to the world, Thomas? I wish I knew, man. Things over here aren't nearly as exciting anymore. Some protests, but not as big. It's the same weird stuff, mostly. Online classes, masks, try not to get sick. You know, I'm really trying to have fun in my last year in college, you know, before everything gets all real. Yeah, I hear you. I wish I could be there too, then. Who would have thought that I'd get stuck in one of the hottest hot spots in America? Literally. Well, I don't know what you get for letting your girlfriend leave you around. How's she doing? She's good. I'm just really glad we have each other right now. Yeah. That's good, man. I'm happy for you. You know, I, I kind of wish I had a, someone like that. It's kind of hard to meet girls these days. Yeah. You'll meet someone, though. Don't worry, bro. I know. Because I am. The man. You two are getting pretty serious, though, right? Or are you about to kill each other? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I guess it's pretty serious. She's really political. I'm not so much. You know me. I'm more or less just go with the flow on stuff like this. But I go to the protests and stuff with her. But it can be honestly pretty scary. I believe in it, the marches and everything we're trying to do here, but at times it's difficult. We're in a weird place. You and Celeste? Well, yeah, we are, I guess. But I was actually thinking about us as a country, you know? Nah, yeah, uh, definitely know about that. Oh, yes, you do. How are things with your dad? Man, you mean Officer Rich? Speak of the devil. Well, that answers that, figuratively. I mean, it's like he cared more about protecting that property than protecting me and my mom. I barely spoke to him before I moved in with Dart, but when we did talk, it was more of just him trying to control where I went and justify why he's right, even though he's totally wrong. It definitely sped up my move. It was the last straw. Dang, man. I just remember when he was like your idol. Well, anyway, let's get off of that. Let's get on a happy vibe. What's up with you? How are classes? Uh, they're pretty good, I guess. It's just I have so much writing to do. But I don't know where to start. It's almost like there's too much going on. You know, I'm looking for inspiration for a really good story. I want to write something about someone people don't really know that much about. Somebody, I don't know, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, because there's no cool people to write about up there. There's no one I've ever heard of that's cool enough for Thomas. Man. Not like Einstein or MLK, Brother Biden, Oprah. Look, I know, I know, I know, I get it, but like, they're the known, the obvious. I'm looking for something else, you know? I don't know, I guess I don't know what I want. Oh wait, I got something for you. I forgot about this. What is it? Here, I'm typing it into the chat for you. It's like a link to some funny site. I haven't tried it yet. It might be the key to life, love, and all your problems. But it's probably just a satire site. It's supposed to have some pretty hilarious stuff. Okay, I'll check it out. Probably seen it though. Lord knows I need more ways to distract myself from getting any work done. <laughs> Glad I could help. Hey man, we'll get through this. I know, it's just kind of hard to keep my eyes on the prize sometimes, you know? Yes sir, I do. But you got this, because you know. I am. The man. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Say hey to Celeste for me. Will do. <clears throat> Please give Dart my most humble greeting and salutation. Come on, why'd you have to go and ruin a perfectly good ending to a conversation like that? I mean, Dart's all right. He's cool. I mean, yeah, as long as you don't make any sudden moves or speak too loudly. You probably had three heart attacks the last time I came down. That's because you kept walking up behind him saying, Bullseye! Bullseye! Come on, his name's Dart. What else am I supposed to do? 
Anyway, you said you warned him about me. I said I tried to warn him about you. And failed, apparently. Look, later, dude. Alright, bye. You know what? I need to check out that link that Davey sent me. Yeah. You coward! Come back and face me! I um, demand to know what kinds of hell this is! Who are you? What is this prison? Um, mister? I don't know who you are or what the heck just happened, so, um, I'm just gonna come back and end this meeting. No! I, I demand to know who you are and how you trapped me here! What is this? Where am I? Okay, this guy's crazy. Alright, so, um, sir, clearly you got a link that you just shouldn't have gotten. Really sorry about that, um, but, uh, Goodbye, and, uh, sorry, no harm, no foul. I did not ask for a meeting. This is no meeting. I, we are... I do not know where this is. Where am I? I demand to know. 
Okay, look, sir, calm down, please. I'm really sorry. Dude, there's just some sort of glitch in Zoom. But, uh, could you please just click that little leave button right there on your screen? What screen? What are you referring to? A, a window? A dressing screen? I, I have none of these. The, the only thing I see is you and, and whatever room you occupy. <laughs> okay, so, so you don't have a computer. What can you have me? What? <laughs> How much did Davey pay you? Davi, who, who's Davi? Yeah, right, right, who is Davi, right. But um, look, this has been really good, but I have a lot of work to do. Um, man, how did Davey get you to do this? Um, what's your name, sir? You do not recognize me. Kind of big thing. Oh, yes, yes, you, you, of course, you are the security guard I say hi to every morning. That's right. Man, I thought you looked familiar. The security oh. guard. Yeah, you know that old fat chubby one that's standing next to the, in the south entrance, right there? Yeah, man, I uh, totally busted you. I totally know who you are, but um, I'm sorry, sir. I don't think I ever caught your name. My name is Alexander Dumas. Something from like Louisiana or something, uh, dark, dark Taskin, uh, dark castle, a uh, dark board, something, something like that. I don't quite remember. Dartan. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Oh, what a guess. And you don't know Davy. Huh. So it was Dart that put you up to this, man. Wow, I didn't think he had it in him. You see, he's a strange guy, you know, kind of quirky. Um, all right. Huh. All right, cool. You got me. Don't let distract me from my work. Okay, Dart, good one. Well, D'Artagnan, I guess you need to manage to make it out of this fight alive. I very much like to make your acquaintance. I don't know. He's got a pure heart. But, of course, if you miraculously defeat me, you'll have to take on my friends Aramis and Porthos here. And I can't promise you they'll be as merciful as I am. Well, I put my diet will be with honor, for I have the heart of a musketeer, and it has been my life's desire to be one of you. Oh, they're not right. Oh, no, 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 please, no, stop, 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 no! Ah! 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 Rochefort, 
Verse 4, you know we won't do that. You and your men intend to live and leave now. Well, here we go again. I intend to die this time. You are outnumbered. We will lose. Hey, Porthos, can you take on these two? I have a date tonight. <laughs> of course. Why don't I take on a day as well? Well, the battle will be an even fight. Come at me, you red mask cowards. That, that is D'Artagnan, the man we have been looking for. Get him. Oh, for one. I know the girl. <laughs> <laughs> causing good mischief. Oh, my lads. <laughs> what is happening? Dude, I'm serious. Who are you and what is going on? I have already told you. I, my name is Alexander Dumas, a writer, and uh, those who are the three musketeers. Uh, I wrote that. Oh, three <laughs> musketeers. Yeah, I've heard of that. I mean, well, of course, everyone has. They have? Yeah, um, OK. I I haven't read it, but I've seen the movie and the TV show on uh, BBC. The movie? What? It's a TV show. BBC? What are you babbling about? Uh, look, man, look, this has just been way too tiring on my sense of humor. Could you please just further explain who are you and what is going on? My young friend, uh, I do not know what is going on. Uh, I am telling you as sincerely as I know how. I am Alexander Dumas. Right there, uh, born in good-ass Coca-Cola. Huh. Yeah. Okay, look. I have too much to do. Too much is going on. Uh, could you please just... Wait. Y your name is Alexander Dumas. We oui, I'm a famous writer, playwright, novelist, uh, serialist, uh, lover of food, wine, people, uh, women. <laughs> And in life. <laughs> okay, cool, right. So, um, look, I didn't have getting sucked into some parallel reality with some French guy's ghost on my 2020 bingo card, but uh, I guess if it were to happen in any year, it would be this one. I mean, oh, no. I'm dead. I'm dead. Wait. Okay, I get it. So I'm being punked. Yes, yes. Where's Where's Ashton Kutcher? He's He's still alive, right? Right? Where's the Where are the cameras? Where are they at? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm in bed. I remember. Okay. All right. Look. No. No. I I've had it. I'm done. This has been way too much. Um, Mr. Dumbass or whatever you said your name was, you can just tell Davy or Dark or whoever sent you that they are trying to freak me out. It worked. Good night. Got swords here? What?
Where the story goes. What have you done with him? Oh, okay. The killing, the murder, the sword. No one came here for swords. What is going on? Look, all I wanted was a freaking story. That's it. A story. Oh, man. Oh, oh, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Oh. Uh, my, my boy, <laughs> it appears you've gotten your wish uh, several times over, I think. Garçon, <laughs> uh, uh, what is your name? Garçon, your name? Um, I'm Thomas. Thomas? Just hmm. Spartanian and now Thomas. Hmm. Well, Thomas, it appears that you have somehow found several stories. Uh, <laughs> uh, my stories. What? It seems that we are in the midst of something Great and fantastic, uh, may have a nature of which I am uncertain. Uh, <laughs> uh, ah, the fitting of the incredible adventure that is Alexandre Dumas would continue even beyond death, no? Okay, let's make it sure. You said you're dead. Uh, we, oui, Monsieur Thomas, uh, strangely, I remember quite clearly passing from the mortal realm. Uh, though I must admit, this is not the afterlife I expected, uh, nor the one I had hoped for. <laughs> Much too cold for the former, and too few beautiful women for the latter. <laughs> right, right. Man, C can 2020 just get any crazier? Man, fuck. Oh, 2020? 2020? If whatever the heck you just said meant the year 2020, then yes. Oh, okay, you've got to be kidding me. A power outage? Okay, I don't understand how this is happening, and you're still on screen. I do not know what you're saying. I... Unless this is a dream. Yes, yes, a weirdly realistic, lucid dream. Yeah, you know what? No, I'm cool. This is this is totally cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna write this one out. This one out, you know. Uh, and hopefully, I remember this all when I wake up. Yeah, this is just my subconscious using that old. Fat, chubby security guard to concoct a story. Yes. Uh, monsieur, I assure you, I am not very green, nor an old fat. Uh, uh, a little bit. Eh. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I am neither green, nor a, nor a god. 
I told you who I am. The mass. For your rights. Right there. Which is more than you ever be? Oh, right. Yes. Um, I'm Thomas, a student, writer, a parent, day tripper, wizard. I don't know anymore. <laughs> as you seem to be just as lost as I'm on me, I highly doubt that you're a wizard, uh, Thomas, from the year 2020. Though some magic does seem to entwine our destiny, she said. So, um... Ah, yes. Uh, well, I suppose we should start by uh, telling one another a bit about our individual worlds, uh, so we may better understand this uh, situation, because too. Yeah, right. Um, how about I go first, you know, since all of your stories keep uh, breaking into my apartment and committing felonies. <laughs> As you wish, Mon ami. Now, tell me, what is the world of the future? to reopen. Now, you've got a very different strategy on how to go about this. Mr. Trump, you're holding very large campaign events. Yes, I am. They're outside with thousands of people <laughs> yes, in yes, airports. Yes, you know what? I have a problem with masks, Chris. I've got one right and here. And Mr. Biden, you are holding much smaller events. Yeah, because nobody will show up. He can't even be sad, really. I feel sorry for him. Yes, you do. But you I have masks. I'm holding it the most. But you have masks and social distancing. Yes. So, in any case, why are you holding the large rallies, and why are you not? Let's start with you, Mr. President. Well, everyone loves what I'm doing. We all know it. Everybody says I'm doing an amazing job. Are you and not so concerned about spreading the virus? Say. And that's why they show up. The hundreds and 300,000, 500,000 people who show up at the time in airports, they come, they think I'm doing an amazing job. <laughs> the outside, you know, I don't hold rallies like him. Be 300 feet away with the biggest mask you've ever seen. But you not worry about spreading it. It's ridiculous. It's a waste Hold of time. On. Are, 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 are you listening to what this man is saying? Is it not painfully evident that he has no regard whatsoever for your personal safety? I mean, my goodness, he's a billionaire. He somehow deludes himself into believing that he's above the very law and order that he preaches so often. Huh. Not only that, but the way that he's handled this pandemic is utterly irresponsible. He discourages mass You know what, Joe? Say. I'm used to the fake news trying to get me. It's all about the okay. media. They're coming for me. I've dealt with We've the media. We've moved to the final again. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> what was that? What was that? So these are the guys who are running for president of the United States. Do we even need a president right now? Like, can't the country just stay single for a bit? Do some yoga? A little self-care, post some empowerment memes. I'm right there with you, man. At this point, I'm moving to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, my bag's are already packed. What the hell, Thomas? What is it with 2020? We're about to graduate from college, and this is all that we have to look forward to. I am very confused. That was who was running for the president of the United States of America. Truth is stranger than fiction, right? Uh, and uh, what was this talk of uh, masks? Oh, uh, COVID-19. See, we've been living with a life-threatening virus for about nine months now, so we have to wear masks to prevent it. Unless uh, it's a special occasion, like, uh, you know, if you're the president. We, we had the cholera outbreak in my time as well. <laughs> I beat it with a magic cure. It was like a miracle. I was invincible. Yeah, that sounds familiar. <laughs> uh, did the man say a billionaire? What, what's he say? Seriously? You don't know what a bill? OK, so a billionaire is somebody with so much money, a billion dollars, that they've completely lost touch with reality. 
And they forget that the rules apply to them as well. Ah, uh, we, I understand. Royalists, like King Louis. Yeah, they certainly act like kings, that's for sure. I mean, they're so out of touch and don't want to be taxed so they can hoard all of their money. Meanwhile, there are millions of kids who are starving and can't afford school. Even the rebels! Why do you not revolt as you did against uh, King George? Believe me, man, we're trying. We've been trying. You know, my dad always told me to stand up and speak up and do the right thing. He even marched back in the day. Your father? Yes, um, my father. He's a great man, um, a revolutionary in his way. Never one to sit down in the face of injustice. Also one to never take any hints either. Ah. Unfortunately, I lost my father when I was a little boy. I was only four years old when they told me he passed away. But I was angry at God. So one day I took his pistol and I marched upstairs and my, my mother, she asked me, where are you going, Alexander? And I said, to shoot God. He took away my papa. Whew. That's deep. We is uh, deep, as you say. Mon père was... Uh, I worked my whole life to define and explain and discover my father. He was in everything I did. He was everything to my mother, and he was everything to me. Uh, he too fought for his beliefs. Uh, he was part of the fabric of the French Republic. Wait, so your dad was a part of the French Revolution? Ah, oui. <laughs> Citizen General Bonaparte. You have served me well too, Ma. <laughs> One day, I offered to award you a sword to ladies of mine. And I would pay you handsomely for your exploits in battle with gold coins bearing my regal image. But first, I have orders for you. <clears throat> Duma! I need you to mount an offensive on the carpet. Stronghold that tops the others. Do so for me. France's greatest military strategist. Once there, we will enlist the assistance of the Italians, and with them, we shall lay waste to the Austrians, establishing new French republics throughout Europe, all in my glorious name. And then, <coughs> then tomorrow, only you, I will need you to. Gather France's greatest thinkers, scholars, scientists, artists, writers, warriors. Yes, I 
we meet them all. I need them all to accompany me on a secret excursion to Egypt, in which you will vanquish the Mamelukes. But don't tell your family, no, 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 no. They need not know about our affairs in the desert. But they'll know. Oh, they and all of France shall know what we were doing there when I am crowned emperor of Egypt. Of course, I do so all in the name of equality. Equality. We? Equality. Here we go again. Brought about by France's greatest general, Napoleon Bonaparte. And there it is. <laughs> we will destroy all opposition in our path in the way that only I, France's know. Humanity's most feared warlord and could. Just as we did in our days in the Third Coalition. Do not. Do not. Do you remember our days in the Third Coalition? Of course, General. You know, Do not. I don't get nearly enough credit for that. Literally everyone gives you credit for that. But! <laughs> I'm used to. Right. Oh my god. Oh my god. That, that was incredible, General Dumas. You must have fought up 50 men all at once. It's not like, it's not like anything I've ever seen. You are, you're a god to our people and a demon to our enemies. You have the strength of a hundred men. It's unlike the world has ever seen. Merci beaucoup, soldier. But we all fought bravely. You're the man we all want to be, the man we all strive to be. In fact, if my wife had more bravery and confidence than me, she would have definitely left me for someone like you. Um, thank you, soldier. That will be all. Well, mon ami, it appears as though you have gained an admirer amongst your men. <laughs> Sad, really, that he should so shamelessly fall on his knees and gravel at your feet and swoon and blush. Ha! How pitiful. I am honored by both his and all of our men's courage and praise. We will continue to inspire them towards many victories, General. Yes, Duma, we certainly will. For France! For France. Uh, General. What? What is it? I should, uh, probably get some medical attention. Yes, I, uh, I see, General. Medical attention. Only the finest medical attention for you, General Dumas. Medical! <laughs> so, your dad was kind of like a badass, huh? Like a Chadwick Boseman, uh, Bruce Willis type. Uh, I do not know these names. Uh, may I think I get the gist of what you say? <laughs> Uh, yes, he was a real, uh, as you say, uh, badass. <laughs> a man amongst men. Huh. I bet he must have been uh, pretty popular with the ladies, huh? <laughs> oh, maybe in Seo. Strong, toy bow, famed legend of the boudoir. <laughs> These things come with the name Dumas. Right. My father was a brave man. A man of action, bold and unafraid. Both on and off the battlefield. He was a man of strength as well. Well, mulatto man in France, uh, a man of mixed race, uh, he had to be. In those days, the seeds of equality were yet to be planted. And romance was not without its obstacles. <laughs> oh, Thomas, you're such a scoundrel. <laughs> Unescorted tonight. I think you'd be 
much better entertainment than any show. I'm not an excursion. I'm Monsieur Dumas. Sorry, sir. As you can see, he is quite excursion, Monsieur. Ah, my apologies, Mademoiselle. The mistake is mine. See, I took this fellow to be your uh, lackey. Now listen here, you scoundrel. There's no apology to a lady in such a way. A lady will not be seen out in public so disrespectfully with one such as you. One of me. I know I have to when I see one. In my country, you'd be fettered hand and foot. How dare you talk to me in that way? One more word, half read, and I'll have you tied up and thrown in a cell. Do your worst. Uh, Rest this animal! Uh, kneel! You lout, kneel! Beg forgiveness for this unseemly behavior in front of a lady. Go! Ah, we. Oui. Well, there are those who do not wait for the times to change, mon ami. Fortunately for me, my mother and father were two of those very individuals. Uh, my mother shared my father's love and courage uh, enough to endure the spoken and unspoken judgment of the times. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we, I guess things only begin to change when we start to do something different. Yeah, try being deep. Very well said, Thomas, sir. So you sound as though you have given me some troubles yourself. I mean, not compared to what you guys are going through. Um, I mean, compared to that, what's going on now seems, I don't know. Things are definitely as uh, troublesome as I've ever seen them, though. Thomas! The weekend I moved in was dark. Things got pretty interesting. Right now. Things are gonna pop off. 
I'm not giving up on this. None of us are. If we go check on your mom now, we can come back later for better prepared. So I'll even come with you. Ah, uh, principal versus family is never an easy choice. Revolution is not without its complexities, no? No, I guess it's not. Use a bolt like that before. So, what are you in here for? For a long time to see. Not like we're going anywhere. I. I've been imprisoned wrongly. I do not know the reason, but I know on who I shall take out my vengeance. I will have my revenge. Ah, <laughs> revenge, I see. Yes, I will kill them all, but first, I will make them suffer. Seek not revenge, my son. No, no. Instead, speak, seek forgiveness and spiritual redemption. Forgiveness? <laughs> God! My life has been ruined by these men. My love taken from me, my meager means stripped from me. Now I'm left here, beaten, broken, poisoned. Treasure. Treasure that'll make you rich beyond your wildest dreams. Surely you're mad, old man. How do I know I can trust you? You don't have to. But I wouldn't go making a hasty decision if I were you either. I'd consider your current circumstances. I mean, think of it. You're on a remote island. There's seemingly no chance of escape. Nobody's ever left this place. But I. been digging a tunnel, and in 15 years, that tunnel will be complete. 15 years? <laughs> I cannot wait this long. Again, you don't have to accompany me. It's not to trust me either. But what are your options? Saving this for a special occasion. I believe you are that occasion. Okay, old man. You have a pupil. Liberty legs, Edmund. Good golly. 
A strong body will come with a strong mind, and as of right now, you have neither. Now, I think, what does our Messiah teach us about forgiveness? Called me. My time is short. Take this. Take this map. And with it, with it, let people find your destiny. Find it. My son. I guess you got a thing for innocent guys in prison, huh? Duma! Yo, Duma, you there? Oh, there you are. Ah, you're back. Uh, Thomas, I, I could not see you for some time. Yeah, me either. Um, I was just saying that you have a thing for innocent guys in prison. <laughs> no, my friend. Uh, I have a uh, thing for liberty and bondage. I have a, a thing for the tragic and heroic. Uh, I have a thing for wrongdoing and revenge. Yeah, that too, but I was just visited by some old guy in this dirty prison cell, and he was trying to teach this one dude about spiritual and life lessons and how to be some ninja warrior, and uh, he had a Bible, and um, he had this map to this place called uh, Monte Cristo. Ah, uh, we, my friend, I, I know I, I wrote this story. <laughs> uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, a revenge tragedy for my father. Revenge tragedy? Uh, we. Oui. I was determined that my father always find revenge upon those who had taken everything from him, even if only through my words. Your father? The superhero? French Hercules? How could anybody possibly take anything from a man like that? Alas, he was merely immortal, like all of us. After Napoleon's insane conquest of Egypt, all my father wanted to do was to go home to his wife and my sister. He was supposed to stay and govern Cairo, but after falling ill with fever, my father knew he had done enough service. I think he knew his time was short. He also no longer trusted Napoleon. He could not wait any longer to get home, so he hired a ship, gathered a few soldiers and supplies, and set sail. He had to be careful, because British ships were scouring the seas for the French. And he did all of that with a fever? <laughs> the fever, possibly cholera. Indeed, it was a miracle that he survived as long as he did. Huh. He's Captain France. Captain France? Oh, yeah, see, over here we have this superhero uh, from this comic book or picture book story, and his name is Captain America, so I was like, you know, Captain France, you know, you, you get it? Huh. <laughs> yes. Uh, clever. So I'm um, about this escape from Egypt. <laughs> Ah, yes, escape. Uh, that is an apt word. Uh, unfortunately, his ship was captured and he was imprisoned on an island. Uh, he could not get word to my mother, and, and he could not even get word to the French government, uh, Napoleon. Although I believe Napoleon knew where my father was and did nothing about it. So he's a celebrated general, and his boss doesn't even try to come and get him? Why would he abandon one of his most decorated soldiers? Bonaparte was a proud and very egotistical man. Who knows to seek? Uh, my father and he were once close, so close that they also named their children after one another. <laughs> but in spite of this, people adored General Dumas in a way that they would never love Bonaparte. Uh, 
And my father was not a man to hold his tongue when he disagreed with something. And as you can imagine, this did not fare well with Napoleon. But he's a decorated war legend. Wouldn't he have some friends in high places that could help him out? Unfortunately, as Napoleon grew in power, my father's friends feared him more than they loved mon père. <laughs> you see, General Dumas was a man of mercy, and at times his sympathies were at odds with his superior's command. And in those days, speaking truth was considered treason, punishable by guillotine. So he was weakened, tortured, poisoned, left or not. But he had some help on the inside, the Spanish of all things. And eventually, he got free. What about the cowards? Uh, we, oui, I agree, mon ami. Uh, and what I love that my story has provoked such emotion in you, I cannot help but feel that you are angry about something a little more recent than a 200-year-old tragedy. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, it's just that... It, it's just that when my, my father showed sympathy for the protest and the movement, he caught a lot of flack from people in his department. A lot of people we considered family friends said really nasty stuff to him. So when all of this happened, a lot of people just turned their backs on him. Yeah. Unfortunate that friendship cannot be tested before it is needed, no? I mean, but what did he expect? I mean, you can't become a villain and expect other villains to be heroes for you. Careful, Thomas. Like Almis, the lines between heroes and villains are often blurred. Are they, though? I don't think so. Your dad was a, was a hero who stood for what he believed in, right? He didn't care if his superiors or friends or how anybody disagreed with him. He's the reason for your stories. He would have never abandoned his principles, his family, his friends for some job. He would have never been such a damn hypocrite. We, oui, Thomas. Uh... Pompeo was a great man, as is, uh, as was his son. But he was a man, Thomas. And in spite of the legendary hero of my youthful idolatry, in spite of the epic stories that my mother told me, I am always reminded that men are often greater in memory than they are in life. When we first became acquainted, you said your father stood for justice. Yeah, he used to. Now he's fighting a war against the same people he marched with years ago. You know, Dumas was a soldier. Perhaps he and your father were not so different. Yeah, right. There's General Dumas, super soldier for liberation. And then there's Officer Rich, foot soldier for the Empire. He's in a difficult situation, Thomas. He has a duty. What about his duty to me and my mom? This is supposed to be peaceful protest, and he's out there being a part of the problem. Careful, Thomas. Too many men, I'm afraid, sometimes choose to job the legacy, the wealth. Did you mm. have or had kids? We. Oui. How many? Uh, seven or so. Or so. <laughs> it, it was very common back then. Hey, hey man, no judgment. No judgment here. I spent decades chasing the ghost of my father. With the imagination, feeling the empty outlines given to me by my mother's stories <laughs> of heroism and truth. The truth is, I did not know my father, or at least not the man my mother described. The man I knew was kind, but broken. A man who, like your father, wore his uniform closer than his skin at times. He was nothing without it. The few years I knew my father were beautiful, but as I grew and wrote, I, I became more aware that my, my relationship with my father's legacy was more than my relationship with this person. And I feel so many of my children got not even that from the man Alexander. Did you abandon your kids? No, I, not all of them. All those years guided by my father's ghost and unable to give my children guidance in life. I'm really sorry about that, man, but 
That doesn't excuse the fact that while my mom is at home terrified, Officer Rich is out there instead of... Out where, Gosson? Out there! And where are you, Monsieur Thomas? I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, fighting for justice, what he should be doing. My young friend, have you ever considered that perhaps Monsieur Rich is out there because you are out there? Thomas, it took me over 200 years in the death to understand this. Too late to apologize to my daughter, Marie, for driving away her mother with my drinking. Too late to apologize to Alexander Fields for not providing a role model. Too late to apologize to the others for, for abandoning them. Do not disparage the gift of presence, Thomas. Do not make the mistake of separating your father's duty to his family from his duty to his calling. I believe, one of me, that our strange uh, Zoom meeting may be drawing to a close. But how? I do not know. Uh, something about this place feels uh, different. Do you think this could ever happen again? Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, Thomas Wizard from the year 2020. But either way. Glad to have met you, Mr. Dumas. Likewise, Thomas of Lani 2020. <laughs> Good luck finding your stories. Um, I think that problem has been solved. <laughs> Very good. Au revoir, mon ami. May your future connections Yes. What the hell, 2020? What the hell? <laughs> hey, man, you should have been here tonight for something like this, like, fringe theme party, as pre like, you know, there's masks and social distancing and temperature and everything, mostly. So anyway, I think you would have liked it. I wish you could have come. A late night video call? Are you trying to make my girlfriend jealous? about to make this weird? I was only kidding about the Celeste. No, bro. What was in that link that you sent me? I clicked it and the weirdest stuff started happening. I don't know. Probably a Trojan virus or something. Do you know what time it is? Seriously, bro. I, I, I clicked it and French guys and, and, and wee wee and uh, uh... Man, we can talk about the wee wee and the computer viruses or links or whatever in the morning. Are you all right? Yeah, I, yeah. Your mom and dad all right? Dart? Yeah, Dart's cool, uh, I guess. He just 
came back from some party. Um, I was actually thinking of... Then good night, mon ami. Good night. If I were to use two words to describe the year 2020, it would be unstable connection. <laughs> Never has there ever been such a time of great disconnect. Never has there ever been a greater need to reconnect, reset, and recover.